prelude to water melody. Kia ora, my name is Wendell. I'm from the China Cultural Centre in Wellington. I'm here with Lily Zhang. Da jia hao. Hello, da jia hao. I'm Lily, a Chinese teacher and long-term Wellingtonian. The China Cultural Center was set up in 2015 by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism to promote cultural exchange and tourism between China and New Zealand. We do this by organizing all kinds of events, 活动 and performance, 演出 in the community here in Wellington and around New Zealand. It's our first radio show, so we're kind of still learning how to do this, but it's great to be here. Thank you all for listening. We hope people enjoy the show. Today's show has two purposes. One is to mark Mid-Autumn Festival, which is coming up, and secondly, because it's Chinese Language Week, Zhongwenzhou, so hopefully some of you may also pick up some new Mandarin vocabulary. Chinese Language Week happens every year all over the country, and for more information on events as well as some helpful language videos, go to www.nzclw.com. Middle Autumn Festival falls on the 15th day of the 8th lunar month of the Chinese lunar calendar. This year it's 1st October. Middle Autumn Festival is a traditional festival with history thousands of years old. It's a time to enjoy the successful harvest of rice and wheat and celebrate family reunion. Nowadays, it's an official public holiday and lots of cities put on lantern shows in parks and have lion and dragon dance. Every year there are several big Chinese festivals and each one has its own traditional foods. For example, Yuan Xiao Festival has Tang Yuan, sweet dumplings, Chinese New Year has dumplings, jiaozi. Dragon Boat Festival has zongzi, sticky rice dumplings. And Mid-Autumn Festival or Moon Festival has mooncakes, yuebing. These are normally round, representing reunion, with a blessing on top, like jiongqiu kuala, or tuanyuan, meaning reunion. There are lots of different blessings used in Chinese all the time for the different festivals. Lily, why don't you talk a bit about how to use kuala? Uh, yes. As we know that, Chinese people like to speak auspicious words. Kuai le, happiness. It's a great word to know. It has been used all the time for everything like Shendan kuai le, Shengri kuai le, Xinyan kuai le. The most important one for today, for Mid-Autumn Festival, we say Zhong Qiu kuai le. So Zhong is middle. Chiu is autumn and kuai le is happiness. Zhong qiu kuai le. I wish everyone middle autumn happiness. And some other blessings we normally say gong xi fa cai, chang ming bai sui, ji xiang ru yi. And many of these blessings focus on health, wealth, happiness, and long life. Always four characters, si ge zi. I can only remember a few myself, like Wan Shi Rui, which means hope everything goes the way you wish it to, and Xing Fu Jian Kang, meaning happiness and health. But certainly you can't go wrong putting a Kuai Le on the end of something. So as we said, Mid-Autumn Festival is about the full moon and the family reunion that the moon represents. And often that's a, there's a poem read at this time of year called Prelude to Water Melody. The story of the poem dates back to the Mid-Autumn Festival of the year 1076, when Su Shi, a great writer of the Song Dynasty, couldn't sleep at night. For five years he had been separated from his brother. The two had grown up together and were very close, but as government officials in different cities, they weren't allowed to visit each other so easily. Gazing at the moon and thinking of his brother, as well as the ups and downs of his own life, Su Shi drank some wine and composed a poem called Prelude to Water Melody. Now, I won't say the whole poem, but there are two sentences in it that are often really quoted by people. I'll let Lily read them as they're a little bit difficult. 人有悲欢离合月有阴晴圆缺此事古难全但愿人长久千里共婵娟。The first line is quite philosophical. 人有悲欢离合,月有阴晴圆缺,此事古难全. 
People have sorrow and joy. They separate or meet again. The moon is bright or dim. It waxes and wanes. Since the olden days, nothing has ever been perfect. 但愿人长久，千里共婵娟。So let us wish that people live as long as they can, though miles apart. Together we share in her beauty. Chanjuan there has a double meaning. It means beautiful woman, and it also means the moon. So obviously that's a little tricky to get fully across in the translation. Now let's have a listen to the song of the poem, Prelude to Water Melody. Various China cultural centres around the world have just recorded different people singing this song. So hopefully we'll be able to see their efforts soon. If you log on to either our Facebook page, look for China Cultural Centre in Wellington, or go to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism's own Facebook page, just look up China Culture, and you'll be able to find them. I'm not sure when the song is going up though. Now Lily's going to play us a piece on the Gu Jin. Oh, sorry, Gu Jin, the Chinese zither. Now, chin these days is a collective name for stringed instruments, but it used to refer just to the guqin. So,、um, for example, violin is xiao ti chin, meaning small carry chin. Viola is zhong ti chin, middle carry chin, and cello is da ti chin, so big carry chin. I don't know what bass is, but something bigger than da, I suppose. Anyway, the guqin is one of China's oldest musical instruments. It dates back three or four thousand years to the Shang <coughs> Dynasty. It has a very unique sound and is quite quiet, so is mainly a solo instrument. Lily, can you tell me why do you like playing it? Actually, I fall in love with the sound of guqin when I first heard it. It is very meditative, calming, relaxing, and keeps you centered. I feel that its sound can touch my heart and soul. Every time when I play, I feel very peaceful, and feel I'm part of nature. About the design of Qing, there are some interesting things to share. The surface board is round to represent heaven, Tian, and the bottom board flat to represent the earth, Di. The entire length of the Qing in Chinese measurements. It is three, 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 six, 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 and five, five, six, 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 six. So it's representing the three hundred sixty-five days of the year. In each part of the Qing has meaning. Some more obvious, like dragon pole and the phoenix pond, long chi, feng zhao. And do you know that window? In 1977, a recording of flowing water, Liu Shui, was chosen to be sent into outer space by NASA. The reason to select a work played on this specific instrument is because of the tonal structure of the instrument. It's representing the intellectual capacity of human beings on this subject. 
I did not know that. So yeah, now we're going to hear Shui Hua Piao Piao, When the Snowflakes Drift, Bei Fang Xiao Xiao, and the North Wind Whistles. The actual name of the song is Yi Jian Mei, meaning One Plum Blossom. The song was released in 1983 as the theme song of the Taiwanese TV series of the same name. It's a sad story of a love triangle and a family feud in ancient China. More recently, the song has become something of a viral sensation on TikTok and YouTube with lots of covers of it and memes. We hope you enjoyed Shui Hua Piao Piao. Uh, actually, we thought we'd add a few extra language learning stuff to our show today. It's a little hard to know what people um, what to teach people since we're not sure what level our listeners are at. Um, but I thought it might be interesting since we've mentioned a few names of Chinese foods related to different festivals. How about some New Zealand foods? For example, how would you say roast lamb? Mm. So roast lamb in Chinese will be cow yang rou. Cow means roast, and yang rou is lamb or sheep. Rou means meat. But I think you should also say that it's cooked in an oven, just to be clear how it's cooked. So if I was explaining to someone in China what's typical, what's a typical New Zealand dish, I may say, 在烤箱里做的烤羊肉. How about pavlova? Mm, we'll say that pavlova dangao. Pineapple lumps? Chocolate bolo kwar. All right, so we've got one more piece of music to play now. Chunjiang hua yue ye. Blossoms on a moonlit river in spring.
That's the end of our first radio show. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you are interested in Chinese culture, look us up on Facebook, China Cultural Center in Wellington. And we also have YouTube, Meetup, TikTok, and WeChat accounts. Our Meetup group name is called Wellington Chinese Cultural Meetup. And at the moment, we're running a Mandarin club every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. So if you are interested, you can register on, your, on our Meetup page. At the moment, we're also running classes in Arho, Guzheng, flute, and calligraphy and painting. So keep an eye on our Facebook page for when the next round of classes begin. We're also doing a language and tea tasting at Lower Hutt Library on the 30th of September from 12 to 1 p.m. So come on down to that and say hi. Thanks everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.